Today marks the 500 years since the Battle of Mactan when the Visayan ruler Datu Lapu Lapu and his valiant warriors defeated the Spanish conquistadors led by the Portuguese Ferdinand Magellan. But how exactly did our Visayan ancestors decimated and defeated the Europeans? Let's learn more! Mabuhay o in kapampangan, luwid kayo o in bisaya, mabuhi! Welcome back to another history video. It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pinoy historian. And if you are new to my channel, in this channel, I make videos about our people's history, our people's culture, and everything in between. So don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please subscribe! And today's video is yet another off the top of my head, unscripted, raw video where I share my thoughts and feelings and reflections about certain topics. And today's topic is the Battle of Mactan that happened exactly 500 years ago today. Now we all know that Datu Lapu Lapu and his valiant Visayan warriors were victorious against the Europeans led by Ferdinand Magellan. And as we all know, it ended with Magellan's own death along the beaches of Mactan. But how exactly did Datu Lapu Lapu win against the Europeans? But before we begin, today's topic will also be included and expanded in my upcoming book, Know Our Roots Number 3, What They Never Told You About the discovery of the Philippines. So please keep an eye out for that. Actually, for those in the US, the pre-order form is now up on my website. So check out the links below and pre-order your signed copies today. And again, I'll be signing them in the indigenous Baybayan script of the Tagalogs and the Kulitan script of the Kapampangans. So pre-order your signed copies today if you're in the US. And for my viewers who are in the Philippines or elsewhere around the world, stay tuned. I'll let you all know once my books are available outside North America outside Europe and outside Australia but hopefully they'll be available in the Philippines very soon and elsewhere around the world so follow me on social media for upcoming announcement and for more content about history culture and everything in between daghang salamat now back to our topic the historic battle of Mactan happened along the shores of the island of Mactan on April 27 1521 and I'm not gonna go too much into detail on what exactly happened but I'll include some useful resources to learn more in the video description below so check them out and also over the years I've made several videos about this topic so definitely check out the links below for my discovery and conquest of the Philippines playlist here on YouTube. Okay, so ano nga ba talagang nangyari? What happened in Mactan? It was a fierce battle between the warriors of Mactan led by Datu Lapu Lapu against the Europeans led by Ferdinand Magellan. And it actually happened very fast. It was over within the hour. In less than one hour, the indigenous warriors of Mactan decimated and defeated Magellan and his forces. So first, teka lang, what exactly led to the battle? Well, as many of us know, Magellan's aim was not just to sail around the world or to circumnavigate the globe, to reach the Spice Islands islands also known as the Molucas or Maluku which were located just south of Mindanao. But actually a big part of why he was there in the first place was to expand the Spanish Empire and he was doing this through the use of warfare and diplomacy. So he used tools such as spreading Christianity and forging alliances with the local leaders. And then on the other hand we also have Raja Humabon of Cebu or Sugbu who perhaps wanted to take advantage of their newly found European allies against his own enemies against his own rivals in the Visayas. And one of those who refused to submit to both Raja Humabon and the Spaniards was Datu Lapu Lapu of the nearby island of Mactan. So in short, Magellan saw Lapu Lapu as a common enemy, an enemy that he shared with Raja Humabon, even though Raja Humabon and Lapu Lapu were actually brothers-in-law. And it was said that Magellan was eager to make an example of Lapu Lapu, that he was eager to engage Lapu Lapu in battle, which we now know exactly led to the battle. So what exactly happened in this battle that lasted less than one hour? 
first, let's look at Magellan's own battle plan. So Magellan and around 50 of his soldiers would attack Mactan by land, but with the full force of their cannons aboard their ships behind them. So basically, Magellan wanted to attack with only 50 of his men because they were confident that their cannons would protect them. And Magellan personally wanted to lead this attack and be on the front lines despite the advice of the others for him to stay behind, to stay on the ship and lead the battle from a safer distance. But again, Magellan was confident, was very confident that the Spanish firepower would easily overpower the Visayans. And speaking of the Visayans, it is also worth noting that Magellan had also refused the aid. He refused the help of Raja Humabon and his warriors. So Raja Humabon and the forces of Cebu ended up just watching from a distance. So perhaps Magellan wanted to show off. To show off that, you know, how much superior the Europeans were. Perhaps he was arrogant because he truly believed that God and his cannons would protect him from the Visayans. And so, on the morning of April 27, 1521, Ferdinand Magellan personally led the Spanish conquistadors in a fierce battle against the indigenous warriors of Mactan led by Datu Lapu Lapu. But as we all know, it did not go exactly as planned. It did not unfold as Magellan had planned it. It did not happen as Magellan expected. In fact, the opposite happened. The Europeans were actually surprised by how the wooden indigenous shields of the Visayans were able to deflect European weapons. You know, it is also worth noting to remember that Lapu-Lapu and his warriors were actually wearing armors, as opposed to how they were usually depicted in the mainstream narrative for the past 500 years. But really, it was their wooden shields that were very effective in deflecting the projectiles from the Europeans. So basically, the guns and the arrows of the conquistadors were no match to the wooden shields of the Visayans. Who would have thought that the indigenous wooden shields were able to easily deflect the supposedly superior weapons of the Europeans? So imagine, our ancestors had this technology that could make wood strong enough to fend off the supposedly superior western firepower. In fact, their shields barely got any dent, it barely got any scratches. But what really messed up Magellan's plan was the environment, the surroundings. Lapu-Lapu cleverly took advantage of their own island, of our own geography in defeating the Europeans. You know, it's what we now call the home court advantage. But more than just an advantage, Lapu-Lapu basically tricked Magellan into a trap. Unknown to many, Lapu-Lapu had actually requested to delay the battle by several hours into the morning of April 27th instead of fighting the Europeans on the 26th. And Magellan heeded and agreed to Lapu-Lapu's request. It was also said that Magellan and the Europeans laughed at Lapu-Lapu's request, thinking that it was such an amateur move or a childish request. But perhaps because they were oozing with confidence, they agreed to delay the battle. They agreed to meet Lapu-Lapu the next morning in the agreed-upon place which Lapu-Lapu himself had chosen. So how exactly did the beaches of Mactan lead to an indigenous victory against the conquistadors? But first, let's get it straight. Magellan's plan wasn't really that bad. It wasn't that stupid. And as mentioned in my previous videos, this was not Magellan's first time in Southeast Asia. This was not his first battle or first war in Southeast Asia. Magellan was actually an experienced and highly skilled soldier. He was actually part of the epic war that led to the conquest to the fall of the Sultanate of Malacca in 1511, a decade before the Battle of Mactan. And the war over Malacca was also a war where our Luzonist ancestors were actively playing key roles on both sides. So in short, Magellan was no amateur. He was not ignorant of the Southeast Asian warfare. But perhaps, driven by his ego, Magellan quickly agreed to Lapu-Lapu's terms without even thinking, without even making an effort to study the chosen place of battle. Now, if the battle happened somewhere else, then perhaps Magellan's plan would have worked in their favor. Perhaps their cannons could have protected them. Perhaps they could have decimated the warriors of Mactan, but instead, the opposite happened. Because the site that was chosen by Lapu-Lapu was shallow and it was filled with rocky corals. It was too shallow for the European ships to enter and thus it made their cannons useless. No matter how powerful their cannons may have been, they were useless because they could not reach their targets. And perhaps still driven by his ego, Magellan still pushed forward without the protection of his cannons. Perhaps he was thinking that at least they still had their metal armors and their so 
so-called superior weapons. But unfortunately for them, the shallow waters and the rocky corals acted as a trap. And their armors did not help either. It was too heavy. And all of this put together made it really difficult for the Europeans to move around. In short, they were trapped. They were stranded and vulnerable. And within less than one hour, the Europeans were slaughtered. The Visayans led by Datu Lapu Lapu of Mactan were victorious. And the rest, as they say, is history. And something that I forgot to mention earlier was that according to the official Spanish or European accounts of what happened, they said that Datu Lapu Lapu had over 1,500 warriors against 50 or 60 Spanish conquistadors. But was it really just their sheer numbers that made them win against the Europeans? Or was it something else? Lapu Lapu's forces were actually pretty organized. They were lined up in squadrons and they were lined up behind three rows of trenches, well beyond the reach of the Spanish firepower and away from the shallow waters where the conquistadors were trapped and helplessly stranded. And while the Europeans, while the conquistadors were being slaughtered, the warriors of Cebu led by Raja Humabon, they actually felt bad. They took pity as they watched from afar. And they even tried to rescue the Europeans, but to no avail. And after the battle, Raja Humabon also offered and attempted to retrieve, to recover Magellan's body. But Lapu Lapu refused. Lapu Lapu and the people of Mactan decided to keep Magellan's body as a token of their victory. And as mentioned in my last video, just a few days later, on May 1st, 1521, Raja Humabon and the Cebuanos would also plot to kill off the remaining conquistadors by treating tricking them into a feast. And as a result, the Europeans desperately rushed to get out of the Visayas. So despite the portrayal in the mainstream narrative in the last 500 years, the Visayan warriors were not savages. Our Visayan ancestors were not uncivilized. They were capable of strategic warfare. They were not weak who only won because of their bigger numbers. They won because of their skills. They won because of their better strategy. They won because they did not let their ego get in the way of battle. In fact, 50 years later when the Spaniards returned to invade Luzon to conquer the fortified walled cities like Manila or Manila and Cainta, the Spaniards needed and sought the help of hundreds of their allies from the Visayas. They knew the Luzones would not easily be defeated, especially not without their allies, and so they brought the warriors of Visayas with them. It's also worth noting that the Visayans used to terrorize China with their terrifying raids and pillaging in the 12th century. The Visayan warriors were not primitive who just got lucky against Magellan. Pero wait, teka lang. I know what many of you are thinking. The Visayans helped the Spaniards conquer Luzon? The simple answer is yes. But later on, the Spaniards also used the Luzones in conquering other islands and other people, even as far as Indonesia. In short, the Spaniards really took advantage of the classic divide and conquer strategy. They really took advantage of the local rivalries. They love pitting our ancestors against one another. And although the nation state of the Philippines did not yet exist, the Spaniards really intensified the conflicts between our diverse ethnic groups. To maintain their hold on power, to maintain their power over our islands. Throughout history, they use Visayans against the Luzones, or the Luzones against the Visayans, against Mindanao, and against other people. For example, if one province revolts, the Spaniards would use warriors from another province to quell the revolt of the other province. So they really kept us divided rather than united. So this whole discovery and conquest of the Philippines, it really points to a bigger lesson, that if we stand with one another and solidarity, then imagine the things we can accomplish. But you know, uniting in solidarity also means that we must also recognize the differences and find unities despite such differences. Like what I said in my last video, knowing our roots is not just about throwbacks or bringing back the past, but really it means staying rooted in our people's history while facing the realities of today. We must learn from our ancestors and use those lessons to unite rather than divide. Use that wisdom from our ancestors to take actions, to address the issues our people are facing today. 
Because what is the point of celebrating Lapu-Lapu's victory when too many of our people are still suffering from the oppression, from the exploitation, and the injustices around us, many of which have roots in colonialism? You know, what's the point of celebrating Lapu-Lapu's victory when so many of us, so many of our Kababayans, still discriminate against the Visayans? What's the point of celebrating Lapu-Lapu's victory when the Cebuanos cannot even sing the national anthem in their mother tongue? When so many of us still buy into this, you know, this many stereotypes that were meant to pit our diverse people against one another, just like how the conquistadors had always wanted. What we need today is genuine unity and solidarity, one that is rooted in the beauty and the strength of our people's diversity. So may this 500th year anniversary of Datulapu-Lapu's victory in the epic battle of Mactan inspire us to dig deeper, to learn from the wisdom of our ancestors, to be empowered not just from their victories but also be armed with the lessons of their defeats and their shortcomings. We really cannot undo the past but you know we all can do better to unite and take actions for a brighter future for our people, both at home in the motherland and abroad across the diaspora. And I'll leave it at that. And again, this topic will also be included and expanded on in my upcoming book, Know Our Roots Number 3, where they never told you about the discovery of the Philippines. So stay tuned, it's coming very soon. Daghang salamat! And for my viewers in the United States, the pre-order form for my Know Our Roots series and the Color Our Roots series are now up on my website. So please check them out in the links below. And of course, before we go, today's shout out goes to Vicky Evendri from Indonesia, Hasifi ACP from Malaysia, Monique Ocampo from the US, and of course, from the Philippines, shout out to Francis Branzuela of Cebu. Daghang salamat, terima kasih, thank you for all your love and support. And of course, special shout out to Bayani Art and Ugat Clothing from the Bay Area here in Northern California. And actually, Bayani Art just recently launched, a few months ago, they launched their own children's book um, about Lapu-Lapu. It's very vivid, very colorful, and you know, I highly recommend this book, especially for our children here in the diaspora. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below about the 500 year anniversary of the Battle of Mactan, of Lapu-Lapu's victory against the conquistadors. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And that is it for me today. If you like this video or learned a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please subscribe. And special thanks to all my patrons who through the years have helped me in making more videos like this. So for those who want to help me make more videos like this, show your support and please, please be my patron or get a copy of any of my books or coloring books or any of the merch link down below. Maraming maraming salamat po, dakal pong salamat, daghang salamat, terima kasih. See you next time or in Tagalog, kita kids and kapapangan. Mickey Tricks and in Bisaya, kita ay ta.